Let's discuss our conceptual goals for this course. So what are HTML forms? HTML forms provide a standardized way of providing a mechanism for users to provide input on the web platform. For example, on the web platform, there are standardized ways for users to input text, numbers, email, color, dates, times, and etc. That these are all built into the web platform. In this way, we see the even with vanilla HTML, we have support for this idea of allowing a user to input in that's data. If you think of our app in terms of how a user would interact with it, you often think about clicking on links or navigating back and forth via your browser. These are definitely ways by which users provide input to the web platform. In the world of front-end apps, you consider if you consider any application that you would want to build, I think you'd find nearly every time you have need for retrieving either text or numbers or email or some kind of specific data from a user. To facilitate this, the web ecosystem provides HTML forms as a standardized way of communicating these specific types of data from your users. The standardization allows for a shared experience across apps. Even if appearances differ from application to application, users tend to be very intuitive about knowing and recognizing the core functionality of these elements. I think it's important to keep that in mind as we build new things, given that often we're dealing with users that have had decades of exposure to the web as a platform. Now, if you've ever worked with just standard HTML and with vanilla JavaScript, creating all the appropriate event listeners, wiring up all of that for creating a truly reactive experience within an application is complicated and can be unruly. This is where the Angular framework and specifically Angular forms comes into play. As web developers, we use Angular, we use JavaScript frameworks to make these kinds of things easier. So what are we getting from the Angular framework in terms of dealing with forms? Well, the Angular forms package gives us a very well-defined API by which we can control standard HTML form elements. Rather than going into the weeds and managing event listeners and element references, the Angular forms API condenses it all down to what we really care about. We care about value, we care about user errors in input, we care about whether the form has been touched by the user or not, and etc. The Angular Forms package also provides tools by which we can compose complex or custom forms. Composing smaller reusable pieces together into larger reusable pieces can be very powerful and effective in terms of managing complexity in our applications. This is a very exciting part of the Forms API. The Angular Forms API also provides tools to provide feedback to the user for invalid or unexpected input. Often for gathering Often when gathering some advanced input from a user, it's unavoidable that a user could potentially enter in some input that just wouldn't make sense for the functionality we're trying to provide our user via the form. In these situations, we really want to give a user meaningful feedback as if to say, hey, this isn't working and this is why, and this is how you can fix it. So the Forms API provides us with a way of managing what defines an error as well as what an error looks like from a data perspective. Building on this, we can provide appropriate feedback to our users and make their lives better. Finally, the Forms API is also a mechanism for local reactive state management. Reactive state management is a more complex topic that we'll get, in towards, get into more towards the end of this course. Using the RxJS library and providing an observable stream of value changes and status changes, we can essentially work that stream into our component machine of functionality. In effect, this will make our components much more declarative. And the thing I love most about reactive state management is that, in effect, you are building a machine that can run and manage itself, as opposed to having to code for any combination of events that could possibly occur. So how do Angular Forms work? There are two main strategies for using Angular Forms. The first one is template-driven forms. Template-driven forms are somewhat problematic. 
They feature two-way binding and using a banana in a box syntax on the ng model directive. The idea is that within your component class, you declare a property and bind it to the given input element. The idea would be that you bind the value of the input element to that class property in a way that goes two ways, whether you programmatically change the value of that property within your component class, the DOM would update, and whenever the user is interacting directly with your HTML element to change a value, the bound component class property would update as well. Two-way binding is problematic in itself because it confuses the flow of logic in your application. Template-driven forms also make it very difficult to detect when changes actually do occur. When a change does occur using the template-driven forms, it's very hard to capture that specific event and trigger something off of that event. It is still possible with template-driven forms, as you can use Angular lifecycle hooks. For example, you can use the doCheck lifecycle hook and put a logic to check if any class property has changed and perform some operation if so. This can be very difficult to manage, and you end up running these kinds of checks every time the change detection moves at all, which can hurt performance as well as make your code significantly more difficult to follow. The alternative is reactive forms, which focuses on one-way binding. In this strategy, you declare a form control object inside of your component and bind it to elements using the directives that the forms API provides. This gives you a very unidirectional, one-way flow of data. So we still have all the benefits we saw from template-driven forms. You may still set the value of the form control object at any time, but now that logic is very traceable and exposes a discrete observable of changes that the form encounters over time. The main thing to get from this discussion of the two strategies is not to use template-driven forms due to the problems we discussed and to instead focus on reactive forms. Given the trade-offs, it really just doesn't make sense to use template-driven forms. Let's build a simple mental model of how reactive forms work. On the screen, we have a diagram of a component. We see our component class, as well as our HTML template. So how do we build a reactive form inside of our component? We start by creating a component class property that houses a control. Then in our template, we have a target form element or component that we want to bind this control to. Using the forms API provided directive, we bind our control to the target element. This keeps our control and our form element in sync. The mechanism by which we create this bridge here is called the control value accessor. For every HTML form element, there is a control value accessor that the Angular Forms API provides out of the box for easy, easily binding to that element. We can also create our own control value accessors for custom components so that we can use the same pattern to control a custom component via the same form control mechanism. So let's look at this mental model in the context of the fundamentals of this course. Our first section is form models. Inside of our component class, we can create either a form control, a form group, or a form array. We will explore in this first section how to create each of these types of controls and how, it is, and how to use the provided directives to bind these controls to the appropriate DOM elements. In our second section, we talk about validation. When we declare a control, we can also declare validator functions to attach to the control. These validation functions will return whether or not an error exists, as well as logic for the data included in that error, all based on the state of the control in question. With this, we can very declaratively dictate when a control is in an error state, as well as how to manipulate DOM elements to provide appropriate feedback to our users. Finally, there's the control value accessor, which serves as the final piece of the fundamental puzzle. Looking at our mental model below, the control value accessor encompasses the white arrow that allows us to very easily bind a control to a DOM element. In this section of the course, we'll see what all is required to create our own bridge and how we can effortlessly declare very complex forms with rich functionality in only a few simple lines of class code and HTML template. We'll also see how this is an excellent way of encapsulating complexity.
So let's start right into it with our first section on form models.